This is the full review of the all new generation of the BMW 1 series and since you wanted to see the M135i, we will deliver that to you on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with Thomas. In exterior, interior and the dynamic driving experience and I can already tell you so far, we will discuss the design of course, but we'll also talk about the technology because they have a platform shift here and this vehicle gets all of the latest tech from the BMW group. So not only anymore for just the big vehicles, everything they have to offer you already get with their smallest model. This will be very interesting in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. short preview for you here. We'll do a short launch control. We have enough space here at the moment. No one is coming, but still, please don't do this at home, kids, just for you here. Let's go. Oh, that was already 116. Wow. In the front there is a noticeable design shift to more horizontally drawn headlamps. They start with halogen, optional LED as you can see them right here with an interesting daytime running light. And then this new huge double kidney front grille here in the M135i. It comes with this dot design, otherwise you also have fins. There are different design lines available. There's Advantage, Luxury Line, there's in Sport Line. It's already a little bit sporty, then even sporty is an M Sport. And then the sportiest is the M135i, also with those stronger bumpers and lower part with the contrasting black here and the Misano blue color, a very nice Thomas blue color, we call it here on Autogefühl. So what's your take here on the front design? It has been, you know, arousing a lot of attention in our static review. What do you think now as you got a little bit used to it? 4 meters 32, 14 foot 2 or 170 inches is the length of the new one series. So there's not a big of a dimension change you've seen in the front is 3 centimeters wider but in length relatively has remained the same. But it's very interesting you can see there's a definitely shorter front hood and the reason for that is transverse engine mounts only and not longitudinal because you do not get any six cylinder. So three and four cylinders and also shift to a front wheel drive platform and all wheel drive on demand. Same counts here also for the M135i. So we get front plus rear on demand, but BMW is promising that the driving experience is not as sporty as before, but even sportier, although it's not real biased anymore. Is that true? We will find out today in the driving review later on. This will be very exciting. Other than that design here in you, 135i, you can see here those contrasting mirror caps, very interesting. Also with some vortex generators, very nice detail. And then this roof line, which is typical hatch shape, so to say. Hofmeister kink design here in the rear window graphic and design line below the door handles. This sporty version also comes with a contrasting lower spoiler right there. And the wheels come in 16 to 19 inch. Those ones here are 18 inch. And this is actually a good compromise. You already have a sporty look, but you don't go for the biggest wheel size because those ones would reduce the comfort a little bit. And this has also to do with the suspension. That's very interesting. So in general for the one series, general one series, you get a normal suspension, then you have an M suspension, a stiff sport suspension, minus 10 millimeters. 
Then you have an adaptive suspension, both for the normal versions and for the M135i. So the M135i would start with the normal stiff sport suspension, optional, the one we have today, the adaptive one, which is then a little bit tuned towards the sporty side in the whole span it offers in comparison to the normal adaptive suspension. And now it gets really interesting, the adaptive suspension is linked to maximum 18-inch wheels, which has some technological reasons because need a little bit more buffer in there. And also, they developed here the adaptive suspension especially together with 18-inch wheels. So, we'll see about that, how that turns out. Really anxious to drive that one. Let's finish up the exterior and interior and then give it a spin. The rear has a typical hatch style, but definitely sportier than before and also more horizontally drawn here, those tail lamps with a nice LED design. X-Drive stands for the all-wheel drive. Maximum distribution is 50-50. You know, that's what physics do with this clutch that it's in the middle part then. Then the M135i has this stronger diffuser in the lower part, also the black contrast, then this honeycomb structure right there. And on the outside you can see fake air outtakes as design element, but real exhaust pipes. Two in this version. And the left one here has a special valve that only opens on demand, for example, when you are in this sport mode. Here, for example, as a contrast, this one is a sport line, so a little bit less sporty in the design. You have chrome around the double kidney, you have vertical fins, and you don't have those vertical air intakes in a way that we've seen with the M135i. So which one is more pleasing to you, the very, very sporty one or the subtle sporty one? And if the M135i sports look is not enough for you, then you can also add those performance parts to spice it up even a little bit more. For example, the front spoilers here are even stronger in this case than 19-inch wheels, the maximum that are available, M special wheels. But together also with the M sport suspension, the ride will be very rough. We have to like that and you can go for that. Also, there's a fixed wing then here in the rear. So again, even stressed up, also the lower part. And then there's also, and that's one of my favorite ones, an Alcantara steering wheel for the interior. So what do we have under the hood here? This one is the M Performance model, the M135i. So in this case, a two liter four cylinder with 306 horsepower. 4.8 seconds is the acceleration figure to 100 kilometers or 62 miles now, so pretty massive. And again, front plus rear wheel drive. Here in this model, of course, we have a lot of uh, power going on to the rear wheels also because there's just more power available and you have this additional bar here that increases the stiffness of the chassis overall very interesting and you can see this short front hood where only a transverse engine mount is actually possible so very interesting and we'll soon test that one of course for the performance it does have a sound actuator on the interior by the way although it has already decent sound from the exterior Reason for that is because engine and exhaust is also very well insulated from the cabin. Then there's also, for example, a 1.5 liter three cylinder available for the base one series, a 180i with 140 horsepower. And then on the diesel side, there will, for example, be a two liter four cylinder 118d with 150 horsepower or a 120d with 190 horsepower. And there's an entry, a 1.5 liter three cylinder. 116D with 116 horsepower and there will be more engines available throughout the line. This is the car key, slim and light, as always with BMW, you close it with pressing the BMW logo and you can see here the M colors at the side here for the M135i. First of all, door closing sound. Yeah, that sounds okay. Not super, super great, but also not bad at all. Keyless entry is always here when you put your finger just on those 
three lines and you close the vehicle, those are here, those are three lines, just one finger here, and open it then with your hand inside. Then we begin at the inside of the doors, soft touch at the top part, then this new decor element, Hofmeister kink design element with the door handle, great build quality. Then very nicely done here, this blue fabric. And I really have to say they stepped up the game in the build quality massively. Soft touch also here, blue contrast stitches. Quite slim those door pockets on the inside. Then the M135i gets this entry batch in the lower part. And also aluminum pedals. And you can see an M steering wheel right there with the logo. Zoom out to the instruments, tell you all about that. First of all, the seats. You, in general, you can get a normal seat, you can get a sports seat, and then you can get this one here, the M sports seat with the integrated head restraint. I'll soon tell you more about the comfort than about the surfaces. The One Series offers different fabric surfaces for the base seats. Then there are also a mix of fabric and sensor tech, the, the leather red by BMW, for example, available. And this one here you can see is a mix of fabric and Alcantara. And this is actually a good mix because the fabric part stays even a little bit cooler than the Alcantara in summer times, but the Alcantara prevents you from sliding on the seat. So this is a very intelligent combination and all animal free. That's also very nice. Let's get inside. And well, one advantage of this new platform is that you have more interior space, although the car has not changed in the exterior dimension. And here for tall drivers, it's no problem. One means 86 or six foot one. You know that if you've subscribed and there's a lot of headroom still left. So there's also panoramic roof available. This one here at the moment without. So this would be the maximum headroom setup. Steering wheel can be changed in height and reach and see how easily I can do that with one hand. So this again shows this massive step up in the build quality. And I really have to say here with the new one series, which is their entry model. Yes, of course, this one here is double the price than the entry model because it's a top trim. But my point is, you get the technology and the build quality of their high-end models. So there's nothing in a BMW 7 Series which would be better or more well done than in this car. That's very interesting, I think. So then, for example, here is a small cubbyhole. And even that one, see here, this is dampened. I really think that meanwhile... I mean, Audi and BMW are leading interior build quality at the moment. And it really seems to be that BMW is, you know, they were lacking really a lot of behind in, as for the interior build quality. But it seems to be that they are really striving for number one position in this respect. Also, here's soft materials here on the top of the dashboard, for example. So it's a very likable setup. It's not super, super fancy. So you get along very easily and very well but everything which you see and which you feel is superb. Then this lower part of the seat, you can make that a little bit longer. And I really like those sports seats with the integrated head restraint because sometimes the case is that the sportiest seat is also the least comfortable one. In this case here, in our Static Studio episode, we've tested different seats also. And I really have to say that in this case, the sportiest seats is also the most comfortable one. So this can also be the case. It offers a lot of room, although it keeps you, you know, somewhat tight in the corner. So again, A+. This is the new interior layout. Again, soft touch here at the top part. Very interesting with the blue contrast stitch. Then you get different deco elements. This one feels very nicely also. It's a very interesting structure. This climate unit here is still somewhat manual. Of course, you have the screen, but you can control it while driving pretty easily. I still like when you can do that and not everything is going up to the screen right there. The base setup for the One Series would be analog instruments and 5.1 inch small digital screen together with an 8.8 inch screen, a smaller one. This one is the top setup with two times 10.25 inch and you also get this new 7.0 infotainment system by bmw so you get the latest iteration it was not the case for example recently for the x1 facelift so this one also has the new menu structure it's really logical easy for example to connect the phone bluetooth or carplay wireless android auto not available with bmw 
Then for example, the GPS right here. You can also use it via touch, that's also easy. And zoom in and out, you see how the reaction time is. So the, the processing power is quite good. And at the moment, it's also one of the clearest visualizations. Here in the BMW, it hardly happens to me that I take a wrong turn or something. So that always works pretty well. And yeah, there's this um, gesture control available, for example here, or you can have a hotkey for this one with this gesture for whatever you want to use it. And then there's of course this new voice recognition where you can say, hey BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? What's the weather today? Today it will be partly cloudy and garking by Munchen with temperatures between 12 and 21 degrees. So nice. Now I know how the weather is and it also changes to the visualization. And you can do like a GPS info, like destination, that's really helpful. And also set the temperature here at the climate units. So this is a very helpful system together with the MBUX by Mercedes. At the moment the best there is on the market. Steering wheel, you can also start the voice input right here with this button and you don't have to say hey BMW and then you can also change the volume right here for example or use this here to control the instruments then there's a steering wheel heating available right there pretty cool for winter times left side then for the adaptive cruise control that is available you activate it right there and again all the buttons here are very well done so Good build quality here and also the shifting pedals here for the automatic gearbox. Those is also, you know, belong to this very sporty touch. In those digital instruments, you can see, oh, even in the correct vehicle color, I have this visualization of my car at the moment. When I start up, you can see the revs go counterclockwise. Yeah, at first we were really, you know, saying, oh, how can you do that? But I have to say, you get used to it when you you know, drive it a little bit often, more often. And also in the middle part, you have more space than, for example, for a GPS information. Then you can also have some more information on the right side, for example, uh, right there, for example, here, the Newton meters of torque and the power output or even a G meter. So a lot of things to play around with that. Those digital instruments are not as flexible as other we see, but they do the job. You can see everything you might need optional head-up display with speed, a loud speed and also some GPS info when you have a destination running. However, it, on camera it always looks a little bit smaller and less clear than it is in reality. So in reality it looks even better indeed. So it's also a good option. You have a nice metal knurled knob here for the volume still. Then those are some hotkeys. You can put for example a home address too. Then in the lower area here you have an inductive charging pad for your smartphone, then a normal USB device, USB-C will be in the rear. Cup holders, however, they are not adaptive. This is a missing, I think. Then 12 volt power supply, another one right there. This is the shifting lever for the automatic gearbox. You put it like this for the D mode. And to the left then for the sports mode that you can shift more individually. This one will also be required for launch control together with the Sport ESC right there. Then hit the brake pedal and hit the throttle, but only in a closed circuit, of course. Then back right here, so you have the start stop engine button, you have sport mode selector, comfort mode and so on. In the sport mode, the suspension, when you have the adaptive one, will be stiffer. And also this exhaust valve will open, as we've seen earlier in this M135i car. And this one here, the normal turning and pressing knob, you still have both possibilities. So not only touchscreen, you can also use this one then and press and select something. And also write an address here, but usually you use the voice input now. And still some hotkeys, for example, to access the map. This one will be the one that is used most often probably. An electric handbrake. Middle armrest, shake test here, very well attached. And also high, like, you know, Look at that, I mean, how smooth the whole process is, really cool. Some space then underneath and a USB-C device. So, one normal USB, one USB-C here and two more will be in the rear. Interesting that when I open the rear door, you can see here how it's cut 
out here from the glass. Well, this is a little bit sharp. It's okay, you know, but um, it's very interesting. You can see it here. So, I mean, it's maybe complicated to do so, but also looks kind of fancy. So then, inside of the rear doors, this is not as soft as in the front, but it's not hard pack. So even this one is softened up, and again, the nice blue fabric inserts. They are playing a lot with colors here too, so for the interior, different stylings available. You can also get some more other daring colors here for the inside, if you want to personalize your car a little bit more. Then the rear, do you see how the rear bench is shaped? This still reminds me of the E30 my grandparents used to own from the whole shape of the rear bench. At that time, there were court seats. It was a lovely vehicle in, in white. Well, <laughs> but now back to the past, uh, to, sorry, back from the past to the present, back to the future. And so <laughs> here again with this insert of fabric in blue and Alcantara on the outside. So the same design styling as in the front. Here the M colors also at the seat belts. Very nice. Oh, look at that. USB-C ports in the middle. There is a middle tunnel because it's still a car where you can get all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive is standard for the M135i, as I said, for the top engines. And optional then for other engines. Well, and legroom-wise, in numbers, this car here has three centimeters more legroom than the predecessor and two centimeters more headroom than the predecessor. And this is where this new platform change also plays an effect. So before I could not sit in the rear with the one series in the predecessor, here now it's possible. So I directly fit in here with my size and also headroom wise, this indeed works. I can put a hand over my head still, this works too. Um, here, by the way, this is one slight disadvantage with the M Sport seat. It's really thick, you can see here. So if you go for a base seat, you would have a little bit more leg room right here. However, this seat is really awesome. So probably it's something where I would say, yeah, I know, I take that. And also the base seat has a little bit more legroom, but has a hard shell on the back part. Here they put a soft shell on the back part, so you have a little bit more flexibility and you don't hurt your knees when you know touch it that way. So I think that's also a quite clever move. Other than that, it's decently comfortable also here in the rear, and this is also probably the biggest advantage of this new generation, together with the new trunk. I'll soon show you that. And again, a nice build quality with the Alcantara here. I love the setup they've been doing here. So, yeah, flipping the seats from here, like this. Isofix at the outside parts each. Then, yeah, there and there for the child seats. This, of course, also better when you have a little bit more room than here. Then you also have this ski hatch. You can put that individual. And when you put this one down, you also have some cup holders here, which are also having those rubber lips that they are not spilled all over the place. Well. Can I sit in the middle part here? Of course, with this middle tunnel. Um, you see, there's more like a single seat setup, so to say, but it is possible, headroom wise, legroom wise, yeah. Maybe not for longer trips, but you can somehow drive this car also with five tall adults. This is somewhat possible. One, two, three, four handles here on the inside. So they did not save that, so you know there's a recent trend that those ones are left out for cost reasons. Yes, you pay a high price for this vehicle, but it still is worth mentioning that you still have those and can hold on, especially if we drive as we soon will drive in this review. And here are also some hangers here for jackets. You can open the trunk here with a pressing a key or under the BMW logo, or now for the first time there's an electric hatch available. And that one is also offering optional foot kick mechanism here with the foot gesture. Ah, now it works the first time. I had some tries where it didn't work the first time, but probably you need a certain technique. So a full luggage setup right here for you. 380 up to 1200 liters is the figure. That's 20 liters more than before. It's a little bit easier to load things in and out. And soon we'll also show you how the maximum setup looks like when we get all the stuff out and also flip the seats. But so far, let's test the child safety here for being squished or not. That's uh, very sensitive. So very well done as for that respect. And now let's clean up that mess for you.
So, now taking some measurements. Here the length is at 75 centimeters. The width is about a meter. And the height here until the cover is about 40 centimeters. And the total height here is something 60 centimeters plus. So, that's about the standard measurements. There's a 12 foot power supply, by the way, hidden in the rear. And you also have some anchor points here for tension belts and so on. Let's now flip the seats and we have to do that from the rear compartment. There we go. You can see there's at the moment a one third, two third split, but as I showed you earlier, this one here can also be flipped individually as a ski hatch, so that's also possible. And if we read through here, this one then is one meters 50 in length. And let me show you the whole setup, how it looks like. Everything is flipped like this. Here we go, and that's your maximum setup for today. Welcome to Thomas's driving part, and I would say we put it in sports mode and just start in a dynamic way when no one is coming. Hmm, that's decent. Let me just put off the spoken instructions. That's an easy solution, by the way, to cancel that. Wow, that was fun already. And that went indeed quite quickly. And it was also something with accelerating out of a corner. Oh, there's a Carmo vehicle. That is the new 8 Series Grand Coupe. There's a Carmo drive vehicle, probably a special engine or something. We'll soon show that to you as well. And well, the first impression is pretty agile. I mean, this new platform is also pretty stiff. And the steering input is really cool. It's also changing here. In comfort mode, it's a little bit softer. In the sport mode, it's a little bit harder. And indeed, it doesn't have much of a dead zone, so you have direct response here from the steering wheel. It feels, feels very cool. It feels quite similar also to the BMW Z4 that we've uh, driven recently. So, yeah. It feels very sporty overall. This adaptive suspension, however, especially if you go now you know, in this span comfort here. So in comfort mode, it's a little bit softer indeed, but it's still already quite decently sporty. And in sports mode, I get more suspension feedback then. It's a little bit stiffer. So you have this variety and overall more comfort. And as I said earlier, when you have this M135i, the adaptive suspension that is available both for base versions and also for this one here, is from the overall span you have moved towards the sporty side of that. But, you know, I'm looking forward now to some bumps in the road or something, how that one plays out. But so far, it makes a good impression that it can actually do sportiness and comfort both at the same time. And that's also what those adaptive suspensions are actually made for. So, let's now get on the motorway. That means dive a little bit faster. I'll also keep it here in the sport mode. Nice grip you're also on the steering, so it's a good position I can find your overall together with those sport seats. And as I said, because we have the fabric inserts, it doesn't get too hot here on a summer day, so it's not too hot here overall today. And at the same time, I have good grip here with the side in Alcantara. And when I also look to Jonas over, I mean, as a co-driver, you cannot hold on to the steering wheel, but he's not moving at all. So, well, he is moving, he's still alive. <laughs> He's not moving! Oh my god, help him! <laughs> but, I mean, he's not being shaken around in the vehicle, although I'm driving quite sporty. So, and now let's get it from 80 kilometers to... And that was 140 already. So, decent. And also the sound. I mean, yes, you have sound, additional sound from the exhaust pipe, from this exhaust valve, and you also heard it from the outside. But then there's also a sound actuator on the interior. You can discuss this also for hours and hours, this topic. I think it's not too bad because, again, 
the engine and the exhaust is very well insulated and we like that because do you pick any wind sounds? I mean, we are now at 120 kilometers an hour, so it's like, you know, um, 70 miles per hour. And there's hardly any wind noise from the outside, so that's very well done too. So the noise insulation has been upgraded significantly here in this new generation. And that's also the reason why they're using sound actuators, because then you can still get some sporty sound on the inside. We can have the adaptive cruise control in this vehicle. I set it here on the left side of the steering wheel. And then the distance to the car in front of me is being kept. Finally, there are also blind spot monitors available. That's good. That's a difference than, for example, to the predecessor platform, which the BMW X1, X2 and so on are using. So when the vehicle is approaching here, then there should be this triangle flashing in the side mirror. There it is. So, and that's warning me. And then when I put the turning indicator, then it's, you know, even blinking. So that's pretty cool solution. So now back to the sport mode because now it has unlimited speed. And let's follow this 63. Wow, even at higher speeds, you have an acceleration like you would have from a six cylinder. Shall we challenge this CLS 63 in front of us? Let's see how who will win. Well, <laughs> at higher speeds probably we won't have a chance, but from a standstill with using a launch control, I'm pretty sure we would be faster, uh, especially like, you know, from zero to 60 kilometers or like zero to uh, 40 miles or something. Now speed has been reduced again. And it always depends here on the traffic, how they have that here in, um, you know, traffic relations. Changing the lane again, so, wow. This is really cool, just every lane change is a lot of fun. And yes, this one here is the top trim. So it's, you know, about double the base price of a new one series. So it's not needed that everyone goes for that one here, but you can already get a decent package with the base one series because the platform will be the same. You can also get an adaptive suspension. That would be definitely a nice option, but you do not necessarily always need the biggest engine because it will also boost the price. But I think the really important thing is the platform is working and also the position you're sitting in here, you know, with the short hood that gives you a good overview to the front. The overall feeling of the car is pretty balanced. So you feel like you can use this in everyday driving, but you also feel like you could use this in on the race trick or something, you know. Together again with those uh, nice seats, they so far deliver also a good comfort. So um, you feel very much at home in this vehicle, and that's also con contributing to a very safe feeling overall. Because when everything uh, seal as four, uh, 53 now, what's going on here? Like seal as 63, 53. Wait a minute. See, it's 53. Maybe the first one was also a 53 because I haven't seen a CLS 63. Sorry enough about that. So, yeah. So that's obviously a fleet of CLS 53 wherever they are heading. Interesting. Welcome to German Motorway. <laughs> yeah, this is like a sixth rental car fleet. So, here the blind spot monitor again. Check that one out. And you can use the shifting pedals here, of course, even if you are in the comfort mode. Then you can go back some gears if you want to do some fast acceleration. That will help. And what I'm also quite interested in, before we get some, you know, some winding countryside road. I mean, when we accelerate up and down here a little bit, then of course that consumes a lot of fuel. But you will also use this vehicle here to do your everyday driving life and so on. And so what about we reset the consumption meter here and see what minimum consumption we can get when we do some cruise control here on the highway, 120 kilometers an hour. So it's like 70 miles an hour. Let's see how that one goes. Because I, I like to do that to see um, what's the minimum consumption then. And then when you do some very agile riding, you often get the maximum consumption. 
and by that you can very well calculate an average consumption um, and later on when we for example test it again and really drive like a long ways usually those values then are confirmed that's pretty interesting so and that seems to be like yeah some five liters or more kilometers at the moment we're going a little bit down here but then after that we'll go a little bit uphill once more again and we'll take a look at that also when we continue our driving for you so and at the end of the day conclusion i will also give you an, you know a figure where we say like what is the realistic one when you also have some more agile driving inside that one so it's a great motor vehicle although it's not the biggest bmw and this is again stressing also what i said earlier about the technology that you have available here so before you know a couple of years ago it was the case that you were driving a big vehicle from a brand and you had everything available technology wise comfort wise and so on and now it's not only for bmw it's also a trend with other brands you can get everything already with the base model the downside of that is also when you go for all those options you can also boost the price up to a vehicle that is way higher in size but then again it's good that you have the possibility and you do not have to pick the longest vehicle so it's also good because maybe you say i don't have so much parking space around me i need a vehicle that somehow fits in my garage or whatever you know so this is a good solution and this indeed feels very agile and it feels definitely more agile than for example a bmw 3 series the steering is also better somehow i mean i like mid-size segment cars yes but this one here is um really very well done and uh, you know we have driven the a35 Mercedes A35 and it was also a great car to drive but you now from a sp spontaneous reaction I think this should be one of my favorite hot hatches here at the moment just from you know from the first impressions I get from driving oh there's again the 8 series Grand Coupe as Camo vehicle should be it yeah interesting what really interesting what we can see here on the road that's also the good thing for you when you are here live on tape on auto gefühl then you can see everything that we experience it should be the 8 series grand Coupe, right yeah jones thinks so too so we relaxed a little bit on the motorway we're now at about six liters on one kilometers that is a realistic minimum consumption and again we'll keep you updated later on what is a really realistic one my first estimation would be about 9 liters 26 mbg us to 31 32 mbg uk i think that will be confirmed later when we drive the car a little bit more but it already shows you if you really want you can score as low as 60 or more kilometers and um, that would be more like in the in a, uh, 40 mbg regions so this is actually quite decent also one of the advantages of this lower weight of the whole vehicle so far i have to say i do not miss any six cylinder and also important info if you're a bmw sports car fan think oh what about my bmw 2, two series coupe two series convertible that one the new generation will still be built on the three series platform the bigger one that is rear biased so they keep that one for the true sports enthusiasts whereas here the one series then were more changed to let's say more versatility use in everyday driving life and so on but this one here the m135i is somewhat the hybrid you know it's not the sportiest version like the new ones that will be coming up with the two series but then again it's already very sporty and i have to say i would not hesitate taking this one out to a racetrack it really feels very good it handles so well even here in this uh, in the comfort mode this is so much fun to drive and they managed to get a, such a natural driving feeling and i think you know that was something that bmw has always been famous for and i think that's also the case for the m135i Already 116. 
Wow. And have you seen or like, well, felt probably through the camera, like the shifting, like bam, bam, bam. So here in this sport mode and with the launch control, it was really hammering in and whew, that's quite a performance. So performance wise, I think we don't miss anything. And there was also like good distribution, front and rear axle. So that's also where you can use this all-wheel drive four to have a very harmonious distribution between the axles. Interesting here also that here with the M135i, this one gets a mechanical front axle differential lock. Whereas the other ones, they get just like a so-called simulated one. Oh, just is done via electronics that also helps to control the car, especially when accelerating out. But here, since there's so much power, they use a mechanical one. And well, when you accelerate out of the corners, also more power is transported to the rear wheels. It will never be the same way as it would be with a rear wheel biased car because then you can get a little bit better out of the corners. But you know, you've seen it with the acceleration here, that was already pretty decent. And now some more countryside roads and I really want to accelerate out of corners. Nice. That's really nice. So, I mean, I didn't have this like kicking in rear axle or so that it's spinning me around. But I did not feel any front wheel bias either. So, um, it's not that you would say this is a front wheel drive platform and so it feels so front wheel drive heavy. It's really more that you have a, that you have a balanced feeling. You know, so the overall car feels so balanced. I see also on the brakes and you know, when you steer left and right, so precise all of the commands. And again, when you accelerate out of the corners, it's something in between. Yes, it's not that it spins around, it's not physically possible. But again, I think with this um, mechanical lockdown on the front axle and especially that the orbit drive is responding quite fast and sending you know, more power to the rear wheels together with the good handling and the stiff new chassis. This really works that you don't feel any negative effect of this platform change. So how is it for you? Do, when, when, Jonas, when, when I would tell you like, um, you know, I will ask you like, where is this car being powered? Like front axle, rear axle, all-wheel drive, what would you say? What's your impression? All-wheel drive. All-wheel drive, so yeah, Jonas says all-wheel drive. So, I mean, it is all-wheel drive, yes, but still I think that um, it's really being stressed that they have the balanced, neutral setup. So I'm, I'm quite impressed with what they've done. So a um, lot of fun. And in this segment here, I mean, this uh, compact segment, what cars are there, what other cars are there? They had to have rear wheel drive. There's basically none. This was all, of course, something that um, the BMW 1 Series fan appreciated before with the car, and I can very well understand that. And sometimes also downsizing is not the best solution, for example, also for better fuel consumption and so on. But I can really understand that they want to make a little bit more room on the interior, especially here. Oh, there's a BMW X2. So the older platform brother, so to say. But this one in here also new that we also can get this new infotainment system, for example. Beautiful countryside roads here also now. Yeah, I can just stress again, it's really a lot of fun to drive this vehicle. And especially when we're here in the sports mode. And so far, also when we were some, had some bumps in the road, I never had the feeling that there would be not enough comfort or so. So I think this combination of 18 inch wheels together with the adaptive suspension is a really good choice. You know, we can um, again really hammer it um, for the, coming from the right. So we really want to hammer it in once more out of the corner. Interesting. So now it was like full throttle now, 
So the only thing that was um, not that smooth now was that there was this, you know, really hammering shift. So they probably did that, that you have a sportier feeling when you're just going straight, like we had on the motorway. But I think when going out of corners, this spontaneous um, hard shift is not so good, I think. So that's the only thing that's negative now. But what was really positive is, I mean, I didn't have to correct anything on the steering wheel. So it was full throttle out of the corner, which you usually also probably don't do, but I really want to, you know, test it here. And there was nothing that I had, you know, the feeling, um, like for example, um, this is like when you, when you hammer like a, a Golf GTI or so, like or Sierra Leon, um, when you have all the power on the front, front wheel that you're being pulled in the corner, you have to have this massive understeer, you know, although sometimes having differential locks or, or, or something, but here it's actually not the case. So you remain super much in control all the time, also when you're accelerating, look at that. Awesome, this is really awesome. And here also at higher speeds, slalom at higher speeds, how much in, you can stay in control so the only thing I found, um, especially in sports mode, you know, with this um, sudden upshift, not too happy about that. Again, I think they made it to be more spectacular, so to say, in the straight acceleration. But I think for the cornering out acceleration, that's not that good. But maybe, you know, when you are in this uh, manual shifting mode, we can prevent that. You know, we go to the manual shifting mode and here, here, here. Car's not shifting up itself, we can hit the red line ourselves. This is definitely helping us, we can do that again. And let's see if we can fix the problem and then we should have actually a flawless cornering out. So using the shifting pedals here now too. And we can also hear something more of the sound. Second gear, now I can go back to first. See if the car is coming. Safety first always. So here we go. Yeah. So I've shifted back to second myself. I think we'll have a better effect when we stay in second already. And then, you know, so this is actually better. So here, for example, stay in the second one and really getting it a little bit higher in the revs. But then nothing is coming anymore, of course. At some point you have to shift. So, hmm. Yeah, I think really uh, this harsh shifting process it feels somehow sporty when you accelerate in the direct line, like here now, for example. Show that again. Then you think, oh, it's sporty and so on. But then again, in corners, hmm, not too keen on that. What, what do you think, guys? I mean, it's a very interesting finding. Now we can accelerate it out a little bit more on the motorway again. Yeah, but I mean, overall, such a sporty and fun car. So most of the things we've tested, really excellent drive in different situations. Yeah, I have to say, definitely now one of my favorite hot hatches. And now to our conclusion for today with the all new BMW 1 Series. Well, from the exterior, it has somewhat changed. Yes, especially with this new big front grille there. Well, it looks, you know, pretty strong for this segment, but I think it does work. You see that the front hood is somewhat shorter, but I personally think the car looks pretty good as it is. It has had different opinions. Would like to hear your opinion again in the comments, but I think it has a nice compact hatch style, especially here as the M135i. Well, but if you, for example, just want to get a cheaper one or don't need so much power as this one here. But you still want the sporty look. There are those different sport lines. You can step it up step by step then and get already a sporty look, but without paying all the price, the extra price for the big engine. The interior, no more space, especially in the rear. That's what this new platform is also for. And a great interior quality, probably one of the best build qualities we've seen with BMW overall so far. And there is really no difference to the very big, high luxury cars BMW is also offering. You already get everything here in the 1 Series, be it the infotainment 
albeit the build quality. Also great seating choice they have here, lot of different fabric choices, so you already get some attractive seats as for the base models. But in this case I can really also recommend this integrated head restraint sport seat because it's really very comfortable. So the comfort is also very good and as for the driving, which was the most significant part of today, it really feels so agile. The handling is really awesome. So you do not miss a six cylinder as for the power. You do not miss any, um, you know, rear bias. When going out of the corners, yeah, I mean, when you have a pure rear wheel drive car, the rear comes around a little bit more, yes. But however, this one here feels very much balanced and especially you don't have any effect that you would be dragged into the corner. There's no understeering whatsoever, so you can be in control all the time. The only thing we notice that when you are in the sports mode and really go max out when you know going out of the corner, which is maybe not a clever thing to do, but we want to test it really today because we want to bring this car to the max as far as we can do that on public roads. Then this uh, very you know harsh shifting in the sports mode which somehow feels cool and sporty and wow, I have a great sporty car when you're going straight. But when going out of the corners, that wasn't the best thing to implement then in this case. Other than that, it was really an awesome ride and at the end of the day, also at about 7.5 liters on 100 kilometers. And that's actually pretty decent. So that's um, way up in the high 30 MPG regions. So I think you can also score a decent overall consumption with this vehicle. What do you think, guys? Please tell me your opinion in the comments. Let's discuss this one here. If you want to see more colors and trim choices, then you can also tune into our static review of this vehicle. And of course, to all of the competitors we have. For example, recently with Brian and Thomas B, they have had the Ford Focus ST, so also tune into that one. Thank you so much for today. See you next time.